Hello everyone and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. My name is Sam Spade and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about Boolean logic. So Booleans, which we covered briefly in the data types tutorial, are a thing which can have one of two values, either true or false. For example, the statement 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 can be either true or false. There's not a middle ground. Boolean logic is an evaluation of the truth or falsity of a combination of one or more true or false statements. For example, if it is raining or the sprinkler is on, the grass will be wet. Here, is raining is a statement which can be true or false, and the sprinkler is on is a statement which can be true or false, and together we have is raining or the sprinkler is on. We have a combination of two true or false sentences or statements that we need to evaluate, and that's what Boolean logic is about. In programming, we have four basic Boolean operators. We have AND, OR, XOR, NOT. And we have symbolic equivalents of each of those. So AND, OR, XOR, and NOT. So now let's walk through some statements with truth tables. So a truth table takes a value and it puts every possibility of that value. So P can be true or false. And then it does an operation or, or has a symbol about that value and tells you the resulting value, true or false. So this is a very simple, very redundant truth table where we're just looking at P, we're not doing anything on it, and then we're looking at the ultimate result. So if P is true, P is true. And if P is false, P is false. Now, however, we're gonna add the not operator. So we're saying P is true, but not P therefore is false. If P is false, not P is true. So the not operator simply reverses the truth value of a statement. Next, we have the and operator. So now we need two values, P and Q. And again, here we have every combination of those two values, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. P and Q is true only if both are true. So when you say P and Q, you're asking, are both P and Q true? They evaluate the true here. Every other combination will be false. Obviously, if both of them are false, then P and Q is false, but also if any one of them is false, then they're both not true. In P or Q, we're asking whether at least one is true. Both could be true or only one could be true. So here, if they're both true, P or Q is true. If one is true, if P is true, it's true. Or if Q is true, it's true. Only if both are false is P or Q false. Finally, we have the XOR. With the XOR, you're saying is only one of them true. So if both P and Q are true, then P XOR Q is false because we only want one of them to be true. But if either of them are true, then it'll evaluate the true. And of course, if both are false, it'll still be false. We're gonna get into some actual code examples in a moment. But before I do that, I wanna talk briefly about Boolean equivalency. Boolean equivalency is simply the idea that some logical statements can be expressed in multiple different ways where each of those ways is the same as the other. So you can change up how they're expressed and they'll mean the exact same thing. There are a number of these, but I'm gonna cover what I think are sort of the three most common. They are the associative, the distributive, and De Morgan's law. So associativity is the first one, and this one is straightforward. Saying A and B or C, or A and B, and C is the exact same thing. You won't get a different outcome if you evaluate these two first and then the result of these two with this one or these two and the result of that with this. Because obviously if any one of these things are false, this whole thing will evaluate to false in either case. They'll only evaluate to true if all of them are true. And the same is true with A or B or C and A or B or C. Again, in this case, if any one of these is true, the whole thing will evaluate to true. Next up, we have distributivity. With this one, A and B or C is equal to A and B or A and C. These, this statement is the same as this statement. And likewise, A or B and C is the same as A or B and A or C. Finally, we have De Morgan's Law. De Morgan's Law says that not a and B is the same as saying not A or not B. Or not A and not B is the same as saying not A or B. And here I think you can see a good example of why it's helpful to know both. 
I always have trouble understanding this form. Whenever I come across not A or not B, I have to sit and really think about what that means for some reason, whereas saying not A and B, I understand immediately. I also find this a whole lot easier to understand than not A or B. Again, this is one where I always have to sit through and think about what it means. Understanding both versions of this and how to transfer between them can make your code easier for you to understand down the road and just help you understand logical operations. Let's move from the abstract uh, algebraic sort of notation to the concrete actual code. Here we have if A then B, but note that A is a full expression. So A in this case is value equals 10. This whole thing is A. So we're evaluating the truth of this statement. If it is true, then we're going to do this. Down here we have something even more complicated. We have if not instance exists, obje object player, or game one, do something. So this might be a very simple condition to check whether a game should end. So we can look at this version of it, if not A or B, and it's pretty easy to evaluate. If B is true, then we'll come down here. Or if A is false, then we will come down here. Because again, if A is false, it'll get flipped to true. So if either A is false or B is true, we're going to do something. In this case, in the game. Okay, let's switch over to Game Maker Studio 2 and see a couple examples of this. So as usual, I've already run the debugger and set a breakpoint. So we're just going to walk through the code. We're going to initialize a couple of variables. So test over equals false, which again, Game Maker will normally store as a zero. A equals true, B equals false. Now we're going to do some of the evaluations, A and B. So A is true, B is false, this should equal false. So our final truth is false, A or B. Again, A is true, B is false. Since A is true, this should evaluate to false, or sorry, that should evaluate to true, which it does. And in XOR, only one of them is true. So again, it should stay true, which it does. Note that when GameMaker Studio 2 uh, records a value as a result of a boolean operation, it will in fact use true or false. Otherwise, if you set it, it will use zero or one. So here, not A, A is true. This should not run because this truth is going to be switched to false. And indeed, it skips over it. But B is false. So the opposite of false is true. B should be run. And yep, we see B is false printed out down there. Now we have our more complicated example. Here we're checking for whether or not this instance, the instance that is running this code exists. Obviously it does, you can see it over here. And whether or not test is over. Test is over right now is false. So both of these things are false. So it's gonna skip that code. Now let's switch test over to true. So test over now equals true. So this is still going to be false because this instance does exist, so that will be true, and then we're negating that, we're flipping it to false. But now test over equals true, so since one of these two is true, again, we're using an or statement, and this side over here, B, is true, this code is gonna evaluate to true, and we're gonna run test done, and that's gonna be the end, test done. Okay, before we end, I wanna mention one thing briefly. English does not translate directly into code. What I mean by that is even though the way we use logical operations in English is very close to the way we use it in code, it isn't exact. And you have to remember that when you're writing code, you need to use the examples that we just went through. So in English, you could say if n equals one or two or three or four, and that would make sense. We would know what that means, but you cannot do that in code, or at least it wouldn't do what you expect it to do. If you want to say that same thing in code, you have to break it apart. You have to say if n equals 1, or n equals 2, or n equals 3, or n equals 4. Both sides of the operator must be a Boolean value. I've taken both of these examples from another very helpful tutorial on the GMC forums, and I've linked to that tutorial at the end. In summary then, Boolean logic gives you the truth value of a statement as a whole, even if that statement is made up of many sub-statements. The logical operators in Game Maker Studio 2 are AND, OR, XOR, and NOT, which have these uh, symbolic equivalents. And some logical statements are equivalent to other logical statements. It's great to know those equivalencies. There are even more than we've covered. 
Uh, and that way you can switch between them and use the ones that make the most sense for the given situation, which will make your code easier to read and maintain in the long run. As always, the links in this slide are below, along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. And as a reminder, here is the link to the tutorial on how not to use and and or statements. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.